Okay, so the recording is started. So I'm going to continue with the code lab. Um, Leeds will help you if you have pressing questions on the chat. Thank you, Leeds, um, as as usual. Thanks a lot. We'll uh, come back to come back to answering any pressing questions um, in the chat. If not, let's get started. All right. So I'm just going to reiterate the thing that we discussed before starting the recording about what we're going to do today, but without covering the basics of cloud cloud computing and generative AI basics and other things. Right. We'll just get started with a uh, session specific uh, introduction. So what we're going to do today is we'll build a high level bookshelf analytics application only using SQL queries and we'll use BigQuery uh, SQL or BigQuery in order to uh, uh, for in order for the data data set um, and also for writing the query we'll use BigQuery and uh, the generative AI API we'll be using to accomplish this um, uh, generative insights application that we're going to build is Vertex AI API uh, Gemini and text bison 32k we'll be using these two APIs and we'll be using BigQuery um, to access the data set and to create a data set create a table and then we'll uh, be performing uh, theme summarization or uh, rather context summarization of uh, the specific books or topics that we are going to look at. And uh, in order to do this, we are going to use Duet AI. Like I said before, Duet AI is your uh, companion for application development, uh, query development, or in this case, um, you can, you will, we'll also be using um, Duet AI for asking high level questions as uh, what is data set, how do I create BigQuery data set, so on and so forth. So basically Duet AI is your uh, companion, not just cloud companion, it's any technology companion uh, in the sense it can help with answering technology specific questions, um, questions specific to your tech stack, questions specific to Google Cloud services, products and components, um, questions specific to uh, writing code snippets, uh, assisting you while you're uh, writing code, completing your code, uh, providing alternate ways to do a certain thing, translating from one programming language to another, writing SQL queries uh, for supported uh, query languages, um, and also for uh, other purposes like security related insights, monitoring insights, log insights, so on and so forth. There are so many things. Basically, it's your software application delivery companion uh, or development companion, right? So, uh, like I said before, we are going to build bookshelf analytics, high-level bookshelf analytics, in the sense we are going to summarize the theme, which is the context of the book uh, or the genre of the book. And we are also going to optionally summarize the text of the book as well using generative AI. And um, the data set that we are going to use for this particular use case uh, or implementation today is the BigQuery public data set. So uh, BigQuery public data set uh, is available for everyone to use for learning and prototyping purposes. If you go to uh, Google Cloud Console and on the search bar, if you type in BigQuery, it should open up um, the BigQuery console. And uh, if you see, there is this, uh, once it opens, I'll show you. You should see the uh, right after the navigation uh, pane, you should see the Explorer pane, which has a search bar. Uh, you probably might not be seeing the public data sets. So what you can do is, in the search bar, you can type in GDELT or you can just type in Internet Archive Books and it will bring in, um, it's there in the code lab. I'll, I'll come to that step, but just at a high level, if you want to look at it, uh, hit enter. It will bring in um, the data set that is available um, as a BigQuery public data set for everyone to use. Like in my case, it is showing up Internet Archive Books data set under the GDELT-BQ project. All right, so I'm going to start this. So I'll tell you how to do this. We'll we'll go to the step uh, later. But right now, uh, I just wanted to show you how to get to public data sets in BigQuery. So what are public data sets? These are data sets that are available for everyone to use um, uh, when you're actually prototyping a use case or trying to take a specific use case and derive insights out of it. You might be wanting to do some projects and see uh, how BigQuery is responding to it or how generative AI or any analytics use case um, is implemented in Google Cloud, right? So for those purposes, you can use some of these um, BigQuery public data sets. I've used a lot of those for administration purposes. Um, I traditionally always use um, uh, public data sets because that way um, the data is licensed and uh, for these purposes, learning and uh, prototyping purposes, and I don't have to look out for any other dependencies. So I'll be using that. Uh, folks, can you please mute yourself? Anyone who's not. Thank you. 
Um, so that's what we'll be using. We'll use BookQuery, uh, BigQuery public data set for Internet Archive books. And what is our AI summarization engine? Like I said before, we are building a generative insights application using SQL. So generative insights. So what are we going to use for the generative insights part? We are using Vertex AIs, Gemini Pro, and uh, Text Bison 32K. Mainly, we'll showcase the Text Bison 32K in this session today. Um, there is a step for Gemini Pro, which I'll ask you to uh, take back as something that you can uh, continue to do uh, at your own time. But that's not one of the things that we'll be doing today. But we've already, if you've attended session one of this particular season, um, you would have already used Gemini in order to build a cloud function using Duet AI. Um, that is fairly uh, enough. Um, the step that we'll, we have included optionally in this code lab is to utilize that particular cloud function which was deployed uh, in session one. And we'll use that cloud function as a remote function in BigQuery and call it uh, in order to use Gemini from within BigQuery itself. The reason why we won't be, uh, the reason we won't be using that or, or do, focusing on that particular step in today's session is because some of you might not have attended session one. So I don't want to talk about something that we completed on step uh, session one. So that's the reason. Uh, that's an optional step, uh, which is step eight. So that's why we'll skip step eight and nine. But otherwise, we'll cover the rest of the steps today. All right. Um, so for summarization engine, like I said, we'll use Vertex AI, uh, Gemini API, um, or uh, Text Bison 32K API, um, and we'll invoke that as a remote model uh, in BigQuery within your SQL itself. Because I said we are going to use Generative Insights, or we are going to build Generative Insights application using Gemini. Uh, sorry, using um, uh, Duet AI, and uh, we'll be building this application only using SQL. So we'll be using BigQuery SQL queries in order to invoke the remote model, which calls the Vertex AIs APIs from within the scope of your data. Now, what is the advantage of uh, doing this? The advantage of invoking uh, generative AI APIs from within the scope of BigQuery is that you're calling the generative AI API directly in a, in a location where your data lives, right? You're not uh, building a specific or so building a separate Python application or a Java application in order to call the generative AI API. Rather, you're using BigQuery itself, um, BigQuery SQL itself, to call a remote model, which is out, which is made available out of the box for you. And you'll be just making the remote procedure call or remote model call from SQL, basic SQL, create DDL statement, create or replace DDL statement uh, for invoking that, uh, for uh, using that model in BigQuery. So that gives you operational efficiency and to a certain extent, cost efficiency as well. Um, and mainly resource and skill set efficiency, because let's say your analytics team or uh, your entire team knows only SQL. They don't know Python or Java, but still they want to use the data and take advantage of the data to provide generative insights. So how will they do it only using SQL, right? So this is where, um, this is one of the places where this um, type of implementation will vastly help your team and business and your implementation as well to get there faster to get generative insights and impact your businesses really faster you can even productionize this by deploying this and this deploying this implementation or application in vertex ai as a vertex ai rest endpoint and can be used in applications thereafter all right so that is uh, a fair introduction for what we are going to do today so let's get started and to do all these things that we described today like how we use BigQuery data set and invoke a uh, remote model Vertex AI to do this. Um, all these majority of the steps we'll cover by using Duet AI. Like I said, Duet AI is our tech assistant today. And we'll ask Duet AI certain things and we'll take Duet AI's advice and direction in accomplishing certain steps. And we'll complete the application development, uh, SQL only application development. All right. So let's get started. Basic requirements. Of course, we already have the project um sorry uh, credits billing account set credits activated uh, project created billing account uh, associated with your project all these steps are done creating project is done the next step is activating cloud shell um do we need cloud shell for this we probably don't you can skip that step as well because we are not going to write any line of code we are only going to i mean we will write queries but we don't need a command line I don't think we need command line environment at this point. So let's not worry about Cloud Shell for the moment. All right, let's move on to enabling Duet AI. 
So I hope everyone has the code lab open. If not, uh, leads, can one of you please ping the link to the code lab again and pin it. Um, so please go to the code lab, go to uh, whichever step you have not followed, follow all those steps. And we are currently in step four of the code lab, enabling Duet AI and necessary APIs. All right, so let's see how to do this. Enabling Duet AI. So how will we enable Duet AI? One way to do it is when you're on the Google Cloud console, right? You should be able to see Google Cloud logo and right next to it, you will see the project drop down. Select project drop down, and right next to it, you'll see the search bar and right next to it, you will see do it AI, the diamond studded char, uh, chat, chat icon, right? So that is your open do it AI icon. You should be able to see it. If you're able to see it, just click that and you will get an option to Active uh, enable the cloud uh, companion API. If it is not visible for you, uh, this chat icon, if it's not visible for you, click the open search button. Um, sorry, um, oh, yeah, search button. And in the search bar, you can type in Duet AI. It will uh, note that it will give you Duet AI admin. Don't click that. Scroll down. You should just see Duet AI with a shopping cart icon under marketplace. Click that. So once you select that, it will open um, Duet AI, the same thing that you're seeing in my screen right here. The only difference is in my case, it's already enabled. So it, it has a green check mark and manage button. In your case, you will have an enable button. So click enable. Once you click enable or once you click the chat icon and click enable Cloud Companion API, you should see the chat like you're seeing here in my uh, Duet AI section of the screen. But this is small, so I'm going to pop it out into a new tab by clicking the pop out icon right here, the arrow out icon here. So I'm clicking that. So the Duet AI in Cloud Console is opened in a separate tab for me. So please note that I'm still able to see my project uh, ID or project name in the top uh, left corner right next to the Google Cloud logo. And I have Duet AI in Cloud Console view at the moment. I'm able to see this. Go ahead and write a simple question and ask, uh, what is BigQuery? So it should give you an answer about what BigQuery is, whether it's a database, data warehouse, analytic solution, generative AI solution, so on and so forth, and what you can, what all you can do with it. Right? Sorry, my internet is not uh, up to the mark, but anyway, uh, it's here. BigQuery is Google Cloud's fully managed serverless data warehouse that enables scalable analysis of large data sets. So this is basically what BigQuery is. Uh, you can call it a data warehouse. Um, I, it, I'm okay if you call it database as well, um, a data analytics solution as well. And it allows you to do uh, machine learning, AI, um, artificial intelligence, and generative AI solutions on the, excuse me, on the data that you store in BigQuery. Uh, and on top of that, you're able to bring in or integrate data from other systems directly to BigQuery uh, using several data pipelines that have been made available for you. But that's for another day. Today, we won't be talking about integration and all that. We'll just talk about using BigQuery, public data sets, creating a new data set for storing our remote model, and running a remote model DDL to create um, a remote model call from BigQuery and invoking the generative AI um, API from Vertex AI within BigQuery on the bookshelf data that we are uh, that we are going to access right now. That's all we are going to do today and see the results of the Gen AI application that we are building in BigQuery. All right. Um, so Duet AI is enabled, and now it's time to enable BigQuery API and Vertex AI API. Now you've understood what is BigQuery. Before moving on to enabling BigQuery API, can I ask you to um, confirm if you are able to activate Duet AI? Show of thumbs, please. Perfect. All right, so let's get started with the next step. So we have completed uh, one part of step four. We have just activated or enabled Duet AI. Now the next step is enabling other necessary APIs because like I said before, we need still two more things, right? We need BigQuery. API and we need Vertex AI API. We need to enable those two. But in addition to that, we also need a third API enablement, which is the connection between Vertex AI and BigQuery, right? You need to make 
uh, BigQuery talk to Vertex AI because Vertex AI is the API that we are going to use or invoke in BigQuery, right? In order to perform the Gen AI uh, insights or analytics. So how do we do that? We need to create a connection for that external connection. And in order to create an external connection, you need to enable the external connection API as well. So there are three things we need to activate. There are multiple ways to enable um, Google Cloud APIs, but we are going to do uh, the activation using the Google Cloud console way. All right. So I'm hoping you're still having the Google Cloud console. If not, right click on the Google Cloud logo, click open link in new tab. And you should be able to see the Google Cloud console just like you're seeing in my screen. All right, since I already have the Duet AI chat console open in a separate tab, I'm going to close out every other distraction that I have in the screen. And I just have the Google Cloud um, platform overview page, the Google Cloud console page on my tab right now. So make sure you're still seeing the uh, select project, your active project in the select project drop down. So what I'm going to do here is search for BigQuery in the search bar. And under products and pages, you would see BigQuery data warehouse slash analytics option. Click that. And once you click that, it will open up BigQuery uh, console if you have already enabled it. But if this is the first time you're using BigQuery ever, it will ask you to enable API. It's a pretty self-explanatory uh, process, just a button click. So click enable API and you should be able to enable this particular API, BigQuery. That's it. So once you enable API, you should be able to see this particular um, BigQuery console with the navigation pane on the extreme left, and then the Explorer pane in between, and then the SQL, uh, sorry, BigQuery Studio or the SQL Explorer um, editor, BigQuery SQL editor on the rightmost pane. That's the uh, uh, that's the long section of your screen in BigQuery console, larger section of your screen. All right. Now that we have enabled BigQuery, what else is pending? We have to enable Vertex AI API and Connection API. We don't have to immediately do it, but it's better. Um, so let's let's go ahead and enable that, activate that as well. So how do we activate it? Uh, sorry, enable it. Uh, once again, right click on the Google Cloud logo, open it in another tab. Uh, we can also do this using Cloud Shell Editor method or Cloud Shell Terminal method, but I want to show you the method using console. So because we traditionally do the Cloud Shell method, so let's for once change it up a bit. So in the search bar, type in Vertex AI. It will give you all sorts of options. Don't click in everything that, that is popped up for you. Just click Vertex AI, the one that says one AI platform, every ML tool you need, that particular option. Click that Vertex AI option, and you will be landed on the Vertex AI enable API page. In my case, it's already enabled, so I'm getting the dashboard page directly. In your case, you, you wouldn't be seeing this. If it's the first time you're accessing Vertex AI, you will get an Enable API button. Go ahead and click that. It will also give you an option to enable all recommended APIs. Do not do that. Only enable Vertex AI API. That's it. All right. I don't know why it says Enable. Hmm, maybe it's not enabled. So go ahead and click that. Um, like I said, click Enable, and it should be enabled for you. Vertex AI API, it will take a few seconds. Okay, it's enabled for me, API enabled with a green check mark, so I'm good. So in your case, if you are seeing this check mark and you're seeing manage button, you're good to go. Click the Google Cloud but, uh, logo again and come back to the search bar. And this time, type connection API or BigQuery connection API without space in between big and query. BigQuery is one word, space connection, space API. You will get documentation and tutorials. Do not click those links. Scroll down. You should see under Marketplace, BigQuery connection API. Click that. Once you click that, you will get the option like you're seeing in my screen. You'll get the option to enable. Click Enable, and you will be able to enable BigQuery Connection API as well. So totally, we have enabled three APIs, actually four if you count the Duet AI Companion API, which we enabled first. Then we did BigQuery API, and then we did Vertex AI API, and finally we have enabled BigQuery Connection API. All right, so all pre prerequisites are complete. Now we are moving on to step five, exploring the data set that we are going to use today. But before that, show of thumbs if you have completed this step.
All right, perfect. Thank you, folks. Let's move on. What is the next? Now that we have enabled all necessary APIs, we have discussed what we are going to do. The next step is actually looking at the data, right? We decided to do some kind of generative insights or generative AI insights on bookshelf data or books data set. Now, where is the data set? What does it look like? What am I going to do? So many questions, right? So how do we get this answered? So like I said before, we are going to use a publicly available data set or BigQuery public data set uh, under the project. There was a project that was created several years ago um, that's called GDELT-BQ project, where they wanted to digitize some books because um, that organization which was taking care of it wanted to have a platform that's reliable, that has all, that is able to, not just reliable, that is able to scale to the amount of books that they have um, to archive all those things digitally in a digital fashion. Right, so uh, that's what we have um, under this project, uh, GDELT hyphen BQ. You don't have to search by project, you can search just by data set, which is Internet Archive Books, which is what we're going to do. So go to step five in the code lab and begin by familiarizing yourself with the public data set. So, how do you familiarize yourself? Scroll down right below the screenshot, you should see the Internet Archive Books text there. Just copy that text without the quotes. Just copy Internet Archive Books, come back to your BigQuery, uh, come back to your tab where you have the BigQuery service open or BigQuery dashboard open, right? Where you're able to see the navigation menu, uh, BigQuery Explorer pane and the BigQuery SQL Editor pane, right? Type uh, or paste the copy text in the search box of your Explorer pane of your BigQuery tab or BigQuery console and hit enter. Once you hit enter, you might see zero results. So click search all projects if you see zero results, right? In my case, I'm able to see it um, even without clicking search all projects, but click search all projects if you're not seeing it immediately. All right. So as you can see, in my case, I'm able to see both the project name and the data set name. The data set name is called Internet Archive Books. Expand it and see all the different years or tables rather. These tables are named by named after the year. Uh, don't worry about it. We are not we are not the ones who created this. These were all, uh, when I say we, like you and me, we are not creating it right now, right? It's all already there. So we are going to use one particular table from this data set. So how do you make sure this public data set is always available for you? Click on the star icon right next to it. If you remove it, it will go away from your view. Because remember, the BigQuery Explorer pane at all times will, will only show your project and your data sets, which means the project that you created, which is here, and the data set that you created, which we never created so far. So in your case, this left Explorer pane will be empty uh, before you search for Internet Archive books. Only if you star it, you will be able to see the public data set that you're tagging for future reference, right? Only then it will come up for you whenever you open BigQuery Console, right? So make sure, don't forget to click on the star icon so that way it is always available for your use. But uh, you may be thinking, if I don't start it, can't I use it? You can absolutely use it by just referencing it in your query. You can just say select star from 1800 or project gdelt -bq internet archive books 1800 You will still be able to use it even without starring it. But uh, you might not always remember the data set name or the year name, right? Sorry, or the table name, right? So it's better to always keep it start so you can come back and reference the table that you're trying to use. All right, now that we have all... Um, start your public data set and uh, the public uh, BigQuery project and data set. Let's see which table we are going to use by scrolling down and this, uh, looking into the section where you have the select query. Select star from project name dot uh, data set name dot table name limit five. Why? Because I only want to look at five records because query will cost something, right? I mean, for definitely not for one or two queries. We we have a certain limit, but these books are, sorry, these tables are pretty heavy. These have so many records in them, and that's the reason we don't want to just run a select star from query. We always want to result the limit by a certain number, 5, 10, or 100, depending on how much you want to query. Of course, you can do a select star from limit 100 because that's still okay. You won't be, it, it, it's still under the limit that uh, is supported. Um, within the billing account that we have. So you should be good. So copy the select statement and come back to your BigQuery console. And on the right side, right next to Explorer pane, you should be seeing BigQuery SQL editor, right? So paste it right here and hit uh, run button. 
and you should be able to see the kind of result this table holds. As you can see right here, it has the year as a table name. Dataset name is Internet Archive Books. Dataset is similar to your database in other databases, right? So it is a database name or data, that's what we call as data set. It's a container for all database objects within that particular business requirement, right? But in this case, Internet Archive Books is the data set, but who created it? It's a BigQuery public data set. So it's available by default for anyone to use on the internet. It's available under BigQuery for free. Anybody can use this data set, right? And then gdelt-bq is the project under which this data set is present. Just like we have our project here, right, which we created similarly, this is the project that BigQuery has in order to host this Internet Archive Books data set. And under that, we are going to use a table 1920. And these are the fields in the table. If you scroll, you will see a column called themes. So themes is one um, summarization that we are going to do. If you notice, there are so many themes associated with a single book, but we want uh, generative AI right, to summarize and come up with just one theme that is the most relevant theme for that particular book. So that's the one use case that we're going to build today with generative AI. All right, if you keep scrolling to your right um, of the result set, you will see there is a column called, uh, where is title? Book title should be there. Or you can just do one thing. You can also, instead of star, you can just do, keep typing title um, and do control, Spacebar, it should give you the name of the field. But anyway, let's see if title field is there. So themes is one thing that we care about. Title is another thing that we should care about. I'm trying to find that. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. You should be able to find title somewhere. Book meta title, is it? yeah book meta underscore title yeah there we go title themes and full text what is the last field book meta full text There we go. So these are the three fields we care about. If you run this, you will see the title, the themes, and the full text of the book. So you might be wondering what full text is. It is actually the full text of the book. Uh, don't worry about it. It's um, it's it, it it's a yeah. It it is something that I was also astonished. I mean, I I was surprised when I looked at it because you can just go here and if any of the any of these books interest you, you can just export the result to a kind of file that you like and start reading the book actually from here. But these are all pretty old. Um, they have data. You can explore this entire data set at your own time. But anyway, we are not going into that right now. But these are the three fields that we care about. Now, go back to the code lab and uh, make sure that you've completed step five. And now we'll move on to the next step, which is creating our own data set. But here I want to pause and make sure uh, you're able to follow. Show of hands, how many of you got to un uh, explore this data set? Understood what BigQuery is? Understood? Um, what, uh, how to create or how to utilize uh, public data sets and how to explore public data sets and what you can use, um, how you can um, actually refer, reference public data sets and the respective table and how you can query and get started. So those are the three things that we have understood right now in exploring the exploratory step. Moving on, now we want to use, want to create a new data set, step six. So go to code, say, go to step six of the code lab. We have completed five steps. Go to step six of the code lab, which is create a new BigQuery data set called Bookshelf. You might be wondering, we are using publicly available data set, which is already there. What are we creating this new data set for? So let me tell you, like I said before, data set is like, or it's, it's very similar to your database and other databases, right? What we call as database. It's a container for all your database objects. Now, we have already established that we'll be using a publicly available data set, which is already there. So why, why we need this new data set? So this new data set is required because we are going to create more objects. For instance, we are going to create a remote model that references the Vertex AI API as a remote 
model or remote procedure call in BigQuery. So that particular remote model itself is a database object, right? So it is an it is an object that we are going to create. We need to store it somewhere. It it needs a place and it needs a folks. Please mute yourself. All right. So you need a place to store your um, objects, database objects that we are going to create as part of this experiment, which is um, the remote model itself, right? So that is the main reason why we are creating our own data set, because you cannot create your own objects in public data sets, because that is available for everybody. So what we'll do is we'll create our own customized personal data set for this particular project, and we'll create our remote model within that particular data set itself. Now there are other things that you can, you may want to create. You may want to write the results to a data uh, to write the results back to a different table within the same data set. So there are many reasons. We will be creating multiple database objects as part of this exercise. So for all, for hosting all those things, we need a container, and that is the reason we are creating a new BigQuery data set. Now, if you're a first time first timer, you probably don't know where to start, where to how to create a data set. We just learned what BigQuery is, right? Some of you uh, don't know what BigQuery data set is. So go ahead and ask Duet AI in the chat that you've already uh, opened here. You can go ahead and ask uh, in the Duet AI chat console, cloud console. You can say, what is a data set in BigQuery? Right? That's probably one thing you may want answered. Um, and the next question, the main question that we want to ask as part of the step is how to create a BigQuery data set. Go ahead, copy that question from the code lab, step six, and come back to the conversational assistance uh, tab and see the result for the previous question we asked. So a data set in BigQuery is a container for your tables. Uh, it's a way to organize your organize and manage your data and to control access to your data. Uh, beyond that, it's not just tables, it's everything. Many dependencies of the tables. Um, logs, connections, uh, views, or for that matter, what else? Mod, um, procedures, stored procedures, uh, models, functions, anything. Because we already established that it's not just a database or just a warehouse, right? You can do analytics in BigQuery. So it can, it has to store all these things. So BigQuery uh, data set is a container for all these database objects. But simply put, it's a container for your tables, all right? So how to create a data set without even asking that it has given you the steps to create data set actually in the previous question itself duet ai has answered me uh, has has extended the answer to my question uh, it has given me the steps to create a data set in bigquery click uh, open the bigquery console click on the data sets tab click on the create data set button enter a name enter a location click create button that's it i actually um feel funny to ask the question again, so I'm not going to. So I'm just going to follow the steps that Duet AI has given me already. If it is not given you these steps and it is just explained what, what data set is, go ahead and ask the next question, which is how to create a BigQuery data set. Now, why are we seeing different answers? Because uh, Duet AI is non-deterministic, right? Because if it is deterministic, it is programmed. It will be rule-based, but this is not rule-based. Duet AI is a non-deterministic generative AI conversational assistance, which is supposed to give you real-time answers to questions that you are asking like it, it's conversational it is not memorized it is not memorized answers uh, maybe it has learned answers over time from publicly available information not from your code not from your questions but from publicly available information and it is giving you relevant answers but that doesn't mean it will remember the same answer that it gave me to give you the same answer right so don't expect it to expect two people to get the exact same replica uh, response of a response Rather, see if it is relevant and if it works for you. And if you don't know anything, you can just from the scratch follow all the steps that is providing. In some cases, it might be interesting where you might be an expert in a subject and BigQuery might be giving some suggestions which you don't like. For example, there may be two libraries to accomplish the same thing and I don't like using library two. Um, and BigQuery is, for, is imposing that library on me for some reason. Then I'll be like, don't give me this method, give me another method because I already know that. But if you're brand new to a certain thing and you're using Duet AI for that purpose, you will just go ahead and follow whatever it suggests and see how it uh, works for your requirement. In this case, um, it has already given me uh, the steps to create a data set. Wow, now because it knows that it has just given me the steps, it went further to give me even source code to create a data set using uh, 
BigQuery API. Now that's too much. We're not going to do that right now. But let's say you're a programmer and who is doing it from a different tech stack. Instead of using console, you can use application to build it, right? Um, because let's say that you personally don't have account when you're in working in an organization where you don't have a, uh, access to the console You will only be given a service account to create data set So in that case, what do you do? You'll probably write an application to create a data set and that's where these will help But in this case since you're all on your Gmail accounts, you should have access to the console itself So go ahead and do those steps To create a data set from the console only All right, so going back to Google Cloud console Where are we? Right here all right, so we are here and um, go back to BigQuery tab, the BigQuery console tab, and you should be able to see. Um, so you can close the, so don't close the Explorer. You cannot close the Explorer pane, but you can just click the close button on the search bar. We don't need that anymore. We have already started. Make sure you've starred the Internet Archive books and gdel-bq before you close the search uh, texts from the search bar. All right, uh, so now I've already started, so I'm going to just clear out the search bar. And what I'm going to do is create a new data set. Where do we want to create our data set? We want to create it under our project. In my case, my project is called duet-ai-cok. So I'm going to click the three dots next to my project. In your case, you will have your project name showing here. Click the three dots right next to your project name and click create data set. Once you click that, you will have the create data, sl data set slide uh, uh, sorry, pop up sliding uh, onto the right hand side. Provide a data set ID. Go to the code lab and see what data set ID is recommended and probably use the same thing because we might be copy pasting some queries. So you don't want to have a different one. Then you will probably end up making some, uh, having to make some changes in the query that you copy. So I'm just going to name the same data set that is there in my code lab. Um, so click, uh, sorry, copy bookshelf from this thing or just type in bookshelf here, all small in data set ID. And let's see the region we want to set as US multi region, which is a default, I'll leave it like that. And I click create data set button. That's it. My data set is now created. Um, like you can see right here, it is showing up right under my do it hyphen AI hyphen COK project name, I'm seeing my data set as well, which I just created. If you expand it, you will see that there is nothing under under the data set because I've only created this empty data set right now show of hands how many of you are able to complete the step okay now that you've created uh, the data set moving on to next step which is creating a remote model why are we creating a remote model here because we already decided that we'll do some generative insights, right? And we just explored the data. If you see what we have explored, it is still there on our SQL editor. If you go to your go back to your BigQuery console, um, BigQuery uh, console, you'll on the right hand side on the, under the um, query results that we just ran in the in a in the last couple of steps. You probably remember that we queried it by three fields, which is title, themes, and book meta underscore full text. So we already established that we are going to summarize the themes using generative AI API from Vertex AI. That's what we are going to do. So in order to do this, we want to create a remote model. So the model like you already uh, know, or I already explained before we started this um, recording of the session is that we'll use Vertex AI API um, for doing this generative AI application insights or generative AI insights application, sorry. So what is the API we are going to use? Or model we are going to use, we are going to use a text Python 32k model. You can also alternatively use the Gemini model, but since uh, the themes are not so long or it does not require Gemini model for this purpose, I'm just going to use text Python 32k. Alternatively, you can feel free to use Gemini model, but the only difference is text Python 32k is available out of the box, exposed as a remote model that you can access from BigQuery. Whereas the Gemini Pro model is still not out of the box of made available for you. And you will have to write a cloud function code in order to expose that model as a REST endpoint. And that endpoint will then be um, uh, implemented as a remote function in BigQuery. So there is one additional step 
which we already completed in session one of the season. So those who completed that step in session one of the season can probably use the remote function as well, in addition to the text Python uh, 32K API, which we'll be doing today, uh, which is the optional step. So you can do all the steps in the code lab. Those who skipped session one don't have to worry about it. We'll only use text Python 32K uh, API, which is also a generative AI model in Google Cloud, uh, which is available in Vertex AI. Uh, so that is already avail made available for you in BigQuery as a remotely accessible model. So that is why we'll be creating a remote model in BigQuery to access that Vertex AI LLM model, which is Text Bison 32K. So how to do that? We don't know, right? Because we are all new to BigQuery. We don't know how to get started. So let's ask uh, Duet AI that. So here is the prompt. Um, go to step seven in the code lab. And if you see, there is a prompt right here. How will you connect BigQuery and Vertex AI to call the LLM endpoint in BigQuery. So that is the question I want to ask because we want to invoke text Bison 32K LLM, which is large language model in BigQuery, right? So I'm gonna copy in step seven of the code lab. Um, if you go to the top fifth line from top, you will be able to see the prompt, which is how will you connect BigQuery and Vertex AI to call the endpoint? Copy that, come back to your um, conversational assistance tab, do it AI tab, paste this, hit enter, you should be able to see the response from Duet AI with the list of steps for interfacing BigQuery and Vertex AI. There we go. Um, there are a few options that it has provided, LLM call for 32, text Bison 32K. Okay, but it has directly given us a query. We don't want that, right? We still want to create a connection and all that. We we know that there needs to be a connection um, or in, in your case, you probably don't know, but um, we need something that interfaces BigQuery and Vertex AI, right? So let's see the next prompt, which is what about the connection? How will I connect from BigQuery to Vertex AI? So this was an understanding that we already had that it's directly giving you the response, but you have still not connected BigQuery and Vertex AI, right? So how to go about this? So copy that particular prompt from the code lab, paste it here in uh, Duet AI chat, and see um, what response it provides. So it has to suggest that we need to create an external connection. Um, since I already know that I'm giving you the response, uh, there we go. So it has given us this response that to connect from BigQuery to Vertex AI, you can use cloud resource connection, which can be accessed from the settings tab of the data set, um, sorry, of the BigQuery console, uh, create connection, and Vertex AI from the list of options, so on and so forth. So that is what we are going to do right now uh, from the list of steps that it has provided. The first thing is we need to create the connection because directly we cannot just write a DDL and access the model, right? We need to do the connection. And that's what I've listed in the code lab as well. Um, that is fine, I, I can create the model, but how does it connect? How does it interact first? So that is the question I asked. And here is the response that we got from Duet AI. So let's see how to do it. Go back to your BigQuery tab. So in the Explorer pane of BigQuery tab, you should be able to see this plus add button. Click that. Once you click that, you should see uh, popular sources, local file, Google Cloud Storage, and connections to external data sources. In this case, it is an external data source for, for us, right? We are going to invoke an API that lives in Vertex AI. So I'm going to click connections to external sources. Even though I already enabled it, didn't I? Maybe I did not. Maybe I asked you to enable and I forgot to enable. If you have not enabled, it'll ask you to enable. Go ahead and click the enable API button. That's not a problem. Once you uh, click that, it'll immediately enable the connections API in the background. Now click this connections to external data sources again. Once you click that, it'll open the external data source uh, pop up on your right side. So connection type, click the drop down and choose Vertex AI, Remote Models, Remote Functions, and Big Nick. Like I told you before, we are going to create a remote model for a large language model that is already available in Vertex AI. Um, it is already made available to you. We are just creating the connection in order to access this particular remote model. Connection ID. So go back to the code lab and see what connection ID uh, label I've referenced. It is typically anything that you want. Uh, for your application, but I'm going to stick to what I've used in the code lab because this will be prefixed, used as a prefix in one of the queries that we'll use. So I'm going to stick to what is available in the code lab. So if you go to um, 
the step seven in the code lab, point five, connection ID. So I've recommended that the connection ID can be BQ hyphen VX. I'm going to copy that and use the same thing here so that I don't have to change anything in the query. So region, keep it in the same region as your uh, data set, which is US multi-region, right? And click create connection. It will take a few seconds and the connection will be created. And once you once the connection is created, you will get this um, alert in the bottom part of the uh, current Google Cloud page that you're in. It'll say uh, BQ hyphen VX created, which is the connection is created. And with a button which says go to connection, click go to connection button. I want you to take a note of the service account ID, which is available in the last line of the connection info configuration page. Right. So take a note of the service account ID. Just the ID a value is fine. Don't have to copy the label. Just copy the entire uh, service account ID value and um, save it somewhere in your Take a note of it and keep it handy somewhere. We need to use it. Why? Because we have created the connection. We need to make sure that Vertex AI is able to recognize this service account. right? So you need to grant permission. So that is why we need to take a note of this service account. So far. Are you able to follow? Show of hands, please. Created the data set, created the data, uh, BigQuery connection. Show of thumbs, please. Those who are showing uh, thumb down, please use the chat to ask your question. The leads team, uh, community leads in the chat will be able to take your questions up. Cool. Thank you. For those who have the, shown that you've completed or confirmed that you've completed these steps. Thank you so much. And those have not, please use the chat to unblock yourself. If not, the code lab has the steps in detail, so you can also do it at your own time uh, right after the session as well. Uh, so don't panic. All the steps are listed in the code lab, just the way we are uh, implementing it right now in the session. But use the chat. And also, you, we have a, a Discord channel, which you can use to post your questions, and we'll be able to take your uh, questions there as well later on. Anyway, now that I've copied the created the connection, now I have to give permissions to this connection so Vertex AI and BigQuery can talk to each other, right? We're using this connection. So how do I do it? Right click on the Google Cloud logo and open another tab. Or you can use the same tab. I just don't like overwriting on the page because we need um, BigQuery, uh, BigQuery console in this tab uh, because we are going to write a few more queries, right? So open a new tab by clicking the right clicking on the Google Cloud logo and you will get a fresh Google Cloud um, console page or tab uh, in your browser. Um, now click the hamburger menu, the navigation menu on the top left corner. Once you click that, the three lines, once you click that, you should be able to see the navigation menu expanded. Go to IAM and, IAM and admin uh, option, click that. That is identity and access management. Once it shows up, you have to add the principal and then grant the access. All right. Once you open this, you see two tabs, view by principles and view by roles. We want to click grant access under view by principles tab. Now, in the new principles tab, just paste the service account that you just copied and hit enter. That's all. You're good. Make sure it's there. And then assign roles. We want this BigQuery connection user to be a Vertex AI user, right? So, so type in, in the filter bar, type in vertex space, sorry about that. Type in vertex space AI space user. There you go. You see that in the first option, vertex AI user. Click that. And once you click that, you should be able to see both the principal and the role assigned to it. Click save. It'll take a few seconds and there we go. The policy is updated. That's all. Now we've connected the BigQuery data set. We have created the BigQuery connection. And we have made sure that the connection has access to be a Vertex AI user or use Vertex AI APIs. All right. Now that the housekeeping part uh, is complete, show of thumbs, how many of you were able to get here? So what do you want me to repeat? Here? So probably let me just show you how, to, how we created the connection. You click the plus add button in the Explorer pane of BigQuery. You click connections to external data sources under popular sources. If it is the first time, it will ask you to enable connection API. Click enable API button. And once you click that, it will open up the external data source pop-up. 
uh, under connection type, choose Vertex AI remote models. Connection ID, you can provide anything, but stick to the one that is there in the code lab for this particular exercise. Um, and uh, keep the location type same as your data set location. And then click Create Connection. Once you create the connection, you will get a pop-up, uh, sorry, alert message. Once it's created, it will say connection created with a go to connection button. If you click that button, you will be in the connection info page where you can see service account ID. Copy the service account ID because we want to give it the Vertex AI user access. And then use the uh, navigation menu in another tab for Google Cloud Console. Use the navigation menu and go to IAM and admin, which is identity and access management. Click that. And once you click that, you will be seeing view by principles and view by roles. Principal is nothing but your um, user, which is the service account ID. Right. So click grant access here and then paste the new principal, which you just copied from service uh, from the connection configuration and assign a role here, which is vertex space AI space user, because we want this connection to be a vertex AI user and select the first option that shows up, which is vertex AI user and click save. Once you click save, you should see that principle added. In my case, it's already added right here. So I'm going to leave it as it is. All right. In your case, if it's not added, go ahead, click grant access and add it. Show of thumbs, how many of you are able to complete the step? I hope that repeat was helpful. Perfect. So now that um, we have completed the connection, we have completed uh, access granting and then we have also already created the data set. Now the next thing, go back to the code lab. We are in, we have completed step seven. All right, not, not complete, but we have just completed the housekeeping steps, right? Now the next thing is to actually create a remote model. So if you notice right below the screenshot for granting access, you should see the DDL for creating a model. It's pretty straightforward. It's similar to all your create or replace table, create or replace view, create or replace trigger, uh, DDL statements in database. If you uh, write a lot of SQL, you'll probably be very familiar with this. If not, it's straightforward. I'll explain. Create or replace model. These are keywords, constructs. You won't change this. Bookshelf is our data set, which we just created to hold all these components, remember? And then LLM underscore model is the name I'm giving to this model. It can be anything. But for the purpose of this code lab, just stick to the same name. And then remote with connection. Why? Because we have established that we want to have a connection between BigQuery and Vertex AI. Because we are going to use a Vertex AI API, right? Endpoint. So just use remote with connection. This is also a keyword. You won't change. These, these are also keywords, constructs. And use the connection name that we just created. It should be prefixed by its, qualified by its region which is us.bq-vx. This is the name of the connection. And options, this is also keyword, endpoint equal to, these are all keywords. This is the choice of your um, model that we are going to use. Now, how am I able to access the endpoint directly by its name? Because this mapping uh, between this label to the corresponding REST endpoint has already been taken care um, uh, by Google Cloud BigQuery um, product for you. So when BigQuery sees this endpoint label, it already knows that it has to invoke TextBison 32K um, API from Vertex AI. So it is already aware of it. Now, is it always the case? No, in some cases it might not be uh, familiar with the label. So there is doc BigQuery documentation, BigQuery um, ML, machine learning, BigQuery ML uh, for LLM documentation, which lists all the endpoints that are identifiable by their that can be identified by their labels. So go ahead and reference the documentation in case it is not referencing a model. For example, if you try Gemini Pro here, it won't work because it is not currently available as a ready-made endpoint for you to use uh, from within BigQuery. Instead, that is what I said. You can bypass that by building cloud functions that invokes the Gemini API and then exposing that cloud function as a remote function in BigQuery. And then that you can use in your step nine and 10, which we'll see uh, in a bit. All right, but for now, we are not going to use anything that is not there out of the box. We're going to use TextBison 32K, which is already available out of the box. So copy this DDL, come back to your BigQuery uh, console, close the connections tab. You don't need it anymore. Click the plus button uh, and open up a SQL, untitled SQL editor. Paste 
the DDL that you just copied. DDL means data definition language. Um, that you just statement that you just copied and click run. You don't have to change anything because we just went through all the components of this particular statement. And it successfully created my model named LLM underscore model within this particular data set. If you see previously, my data set was empty. Now I have a model in there, which is called LLM underscore model, which I just created. You don't have to go to this model. We don't have to do anything to analyze this model because we already know what this model is capable of. What is this model capable of? It can just take in your prompt as input and generate a response as output. You can just ask, um, can you just take this particular row or particular data and summarize it for me? It will summarize it and send the response to you. So that is how this text bison 32K, it's an LLM. Uh, go to Vertex AI and play around with the text bison 32K. You will understand it's a large language model which takes in user prompt in the form of text and response uh, text res uh, response with text output as well. All right, so that is pretty much it. We have created everything that's needed for creating our generative AI application. Now that it is ready, it's time to test the model, remote model that we have created. So show of thumbs, how many of you were able to get to this point? We are almost there, reaching the last step. Perfect. All right, moving on. So step eight is what I said as optional. We will skip it for now because it has a dependency on something that we did in session one of the season. We will be use, in this step, we'll be using a remote. Like I said before, remember in the last step, you used endpoint by just its label because it's made available for you. And that's why it is create or replace model. Whereas in step eight, I'm using create or replace function instead of model because I'm using a cloud function here, which, uh, behind the scenes that cloud function uses gemini api or gemini model sd gemini's sd um, java sdk a java library in order to implement the gemini uh, uh, use case there and that function is being used or referenced with the endpoint that is available here so i don't want you to do this as part of this session try it out at your own time when you have completed session one if you have completed session one feel free to do this um, later also i'm not going to cover the step right now all right, moving on. Some uh, step nine: summarizing the themes using the remote model. Now that we have created the remote model in step seven, go to step nine of the code lab. It is a select query. So this is exactly the step where you are going to use the model that we have created, the LLM that we have remotely accessed to create this BigQuery model, LLM underscore model. We are going to invoke that in generate underscore text construct and write a select query to pass in my data which is prompt the to pass in my prompt which is taken from the table internet archive books 1920 table so what am i asking in the prompt read all the words in the following text separated by semicolon and come up with one single most relating theme that is applicable and what is the uh, what is the following text and that is what i'm appending by appending with themes themes is the field which i showed you already i'll show it show that to you again and then take the title of the book from the following value, book meta title. This is the field that has a title. Return a meaningful and concise theme with one or two words, not more than that. If a theme is not possible, return a context from its title, but do not return empty or null. You can augment the prompt with whatever information you want. You know how LLMs are. You can give as much advice and recommendation as you can. It will still generate whatever it wants to. That's a different story. But yeah, you still have this. Um, um prompt right here it is a concatenation of the three fields that we explored before and this is the from close up basic select query in sql you all probably uh, would have used it now copy this exactly the way it is come back to bigquery tab which we have open where is it wait 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 my tab is running all right now open another tab if you like an empty editor tab in bigquery Go to BigQuery console and then uh, under the SQL editor pane, open a new SQL edit, untitled SQL editor by clicking the plus icon over here. Paste the select statement, that select query that you just copied. Everything should work as it is if you did not change anything. Click run. You can, you can keep the limit to 5 or 10 or 100 depending on what you want. I just keep it at 1. There we go. We got the generate result that says this is my generated theme, which is American Civil War. 
that's it that's my theme uh, it looks slightly different uh, difference in sense uh, slightly descriptive the reason is i have not set flatten json query to true in this particular query if you notice i have not used this flatten json query you can use that attribute to see only the result or you can ask it to or you can just fetch only the result and see it but ultimately this is your result american civil war is the theme of this particular book you can also additionally add other fields right here to see the title for which it has given this particular theme all right so before moving on to this uh, okay here we go the optional step of including the flattened json output is also right there right below so copy that particular one you can copy this code sample as well and come back here and run that one instead. See here I have my flattened JSON input set as output set as true and max output tokens. These are all LLM variables, LLM parameters. Um, you probably are already already aware of these. If not, go to Vertex AI. Um, in Google Cloud Console and search for uh, Vertex AI Studio or Generative AI Studio, and sh you should be able to see these parameters on the right hand side. It also has a small question mark that explains what it is. I'll just give you a one line explanation. Temperature is a parameter that says how wild or creative your response can be, and max output tokens is a parameter that says how many um, tokens or amount of words that you can have or amount of uh, text that you can have in response. That's what it is. Uh, and through a flattened JSON output, you will see the result and you'll understand what it means for yourself. It will flatten the response, basically. As you can see right here, you see the difference in response between the two, right? One is pretty nested and detailed and all the other things. And the other one is just the text. It's flattened text as your response. So that's pretty much it. It has flattened the result in two columns as opposed to having it only in one column. So that's basically what this additional attribute does. So that is pretty much it. To create, uh, to create this particular, um, use the particular model that we've used, which is text bison 32K in a generate text context. Basically, generate text is what is where you're building the generative AI application using a simple select query. That's all it is. We just wrote a simple select query, nothing else. But we have used the model, which we have created as a remote model in the previous step by using the create or replace model DDL, and which is, which is behind the scenes referencing the Vertex AI model called text bison 32K. You can use any model of your choice if it is already available out of the box. If not, you can make a model uh, available for your requirement by writing a cloud, wrapping it in a cloud function or a cloud run application and exposing it as a REST endpoint and calling that here from BigQuery. There's another method, uh, there's another step in order to do that, which is optional for this particular session, but it is available in step eight. Go ahead and uh, at your own time, review that so you can learn how to do that as well. Now, finally, skip step 10 because that is uh, related to the optional step that we make, missed. So that is OK. 8 and 10 are related. So I'm going to go to step 11, store books data in a table. Now that I have everything I need, uh, we have built a generative AI application using the simple select query. How do I retain this information? Because I may want to use it uh, in some other downstream application, right? So moving on to step 11, which is storing books data in a table. Now that I've created the generative insights analytics, which is the summary of theme, how do I write it into a table? Now, let's say um, this is a select query we use, right? Yeah. Now, let's say we want to write it into a table. Let's ask Duet AI because we have the chat assistance on hold for a while. We didn't ask any question recently. So um, after step seven, we didn't ask anything. So let's ask this question right now. Uh, the prompt is here. It's, the, it's there in a... Uh, code uh, code block. I don't know why I wrote in a code block, but it's it's still good. Just copy this. Use the copy code sample button to copy the entire prompt. Basically, the prompt is create a BigQuery table named bookshelf dot books from this select query. The select query is exactly what we used right here. So I'm going to go to my conversational assistants and ask it to create a BigQuery table named uh, bookshelf dot books from the select query. We, I'm not asking it to create a table. Well, that's what I'm asking, but it cannot execute it for you. You will, it'll just give you the query. You'll copy that and run it in your BigQuery editor, or you'll take guidance from there and you'll use it. Okay, there we go. It has it has given me the create table query, create table bookshelf dot books as select blah 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 everything that we entered there. All right, so you can just copy this 
come back to BigQuery editor, open another tab, untitled editor tab, paste it, and click. OK, cannot access field context. OK, some error in the code that we copied. Oh, that is probably because we skip the full text part of it, isn't it? The book title result string. We just want the result string, right? So just remove this. So this is the part that is showing the error. Just remove the dot context. It's not required. So it is um, the query that Duet AI suggested to us is pretty detailed. It's trying to read the context field. We don't need to because we are using flatten JSON output as true. Uh, it will not be required to use this particular thing. So remove it. All right. Remove the dot context. And now I've got a green check mark, which is which means this query create table construct will work. DDL will work. So I'll click run, the run button. So if you're confused what to delete, just go to the code lab. Uh, you will see the query. In case you want to copy it from here directly, you can just copy. It is the same thing that Duet AI returned, except for uh, dot context right here. It is not required. It was providing that because it was not taking into account the true that as flat and JSON in, uh, output that we have set. All right, so copy that and come back and run it you should the entire thing the create table qu uh, statement from the code lab you can just copy the entire thing from here from the code lab and run it in your bigquery editor uh, in my case the query is complete i mean the ddl is complete the statement created a new table named books now you understand why we created the data set uh, the table is also created within the data set the model is also created within the data set so we have our own data set named bookshelf under our project which has these two things so these are made available within the particular data set itself so my bookshelf project or bookshelf data set now has two objects one is the books table and the other is the model that i created to access the vertex ai api which is text bison 32k now that we have the result in a table can we query this table and see the table that we just created and see what is there. Open another tab and just paste this query select or type this query select star from bookshelf.books and see what we have in here. Interesting. I have only, okay. I have five rows out of which the last three have their context or theme updated. The so there are five books out of which I've got the summary for three themes, which is the history of the American. I don't know what is the book title. Let me expand it and see. history of the American people. It is identified as American Civil War theme. Um, if you notice, there are so many themes that are available as part of this. Um, so many contexts around this book, but it has identified this particular context to be the most relevant. Same thing. Um, the next book, which is um i don't exactly mean what these i don't exactly know what these words mean but there is a book uh, which has a bunch of contexts which also relate to american civil war so that is highlighted here the next one the first 100 noted men and women of the screen so that is a book and it is identified under the theme education and taxes so that is pretty much it. You should be able to see this particular result in your newly created table. You can tweak the prompt in such a way that the response is always obtained. Uh, you can set default values. Maybe I didn't do a good job in uh, drafting or creating, crafting this prompt. Uh, try tweaking the prompt uh, to ensure that it always returns some kind of result. Or alternatively, you can ask it to return the response in a JSON format um, with a default value if it has nothing to say. So if you prov provision that in your prompt, it will it will always give you a value uh, or response in JSON format, and it will always have a default fallback option if there is no response to provide for that particular context. So that's pretty much it. Show of thumbs, how many of you were able to test this, complete the step, and test the model that we've created? Perfect.
Thanks, everyone. So now that we have completed this, what you've done so far is you've created a room. Uh, sorry, you've created, um, you've actually activated Duet AI, enabled Duet AI API, enabled BigQuery API, enabled BigQuery Connection API, and Vertex AI API. And then you created a remote model in BigQuery. Um, but before creating the remote model, what we did is we created um, a connection, BigQuery connection, because we wanted BigQuery to talk to Vertex AI. So you created a remote connection and then you gave access to the remote connection so BigQuery and Vertex AI can talk to each other. Um, and then what you did is you created a remote model in BigQuery that invokes the Vertex AI endpoint. And then finally, we skipped the remote function step. Uh, but if you're able to do it, amazing. If not, try it out at your own time. But for this, you need your session one um, project completed. Otherwise, you will not have a cloud function to deploy, right? Uh, deploy cloud function URL. So if you skip that, that's fine. But if you've done it, then it's great. Um, so yeah, so uh, then we create use the remote model that we created and invoked it in a select SQL to implement the active generative AI application, implement the generative AI insights using a simple select statement by invoking the text Bison 32K model as a remote model in BigQuery, the model which we just uh, created using the create or replace model DDL. And we saw the result. And finally, we wrote that result into a table by creating a new table in BigQuery dataset that we just created, uh, which is bookshelf. And the table name is books. So these are the steps that we created. And we used Duet AI along the process uh, of implementing this. So that's what you've done. For submission of result for this particular code lab, you will have to submit step 11, the store books data. Scroll down. If you see, um, the second last step, right? This step, sorry, the third last image, which you see, which is a Duet AI chat response. So your Duet AI question and the Duet AI response that you received, the create a BigQuery table. So that is the part that we want in response. Um, so that is the part we want in submission of results. So basically, let me show it in the chat itself. Uh, so this is my conversational assistance. This is the last part, right? This is the last Duet AI interaction that you've had for this particular session. Um, or this particular code lab if you're doing it at your own time. So make sure, um, I've already selected that. Make sure you're able to select from this part. Wait. Okay, make sure you're able to select this whole section. I'm just highlighting it so you're able to see it right now. We want, from Duet AI in Cloud Console, we want conversational assistance. We want to be able to see clear chat and we want to be able to see your prompt here and then the response that it has given to you. So this should be your result submission. Like always, the link to result submission is available um, in the session uh, details of this particular session in codevipassana.dev website. If you're um, not on the site, you would have also received it in email or right after the session, uh, probably after a few hours, you will receive an email with the recording um, of today's session as well. So this is, this is the detail here. This link will be updated after a few hours once the recording is processed. Um, and then the result submission link is also available right here. What you need to submit in the result is also available in text description right here. And the link is available here. If the link for some reason is not accepting your result um, for some reason, you can always use the form submission link to submit the screenshot. Um, when you're doing so, make sure you, so I think you will have to give me a Google Drive access. Um, make sure you're giving access to anyone with the link so I'm able to um, validate and score you your your submission all right but if you as much as possible try to use the app so that validation and uh, score update is immediate all right so that's pretty much it for the session show of thumbs on if you were able to make it till this point and get the uh, table created okay that's amazing thank you all for your confirmation um deadline to submit your results is 25th march of the sessions together one last time i'll repeat um, what we have to submit in result so if you notice the last thing that we inter interacted with duet ai for this particular code lab which is if you go to the code lab go to step 11 in the code lab store books data in a table and scroll down to the section where you see um duet ai chat responses as follows Right. So here is the prompt and the response. So that should be the part which you submit in the result. But make sure you're able to see it in this uh, 
scope. You should be able to see Duet AI in chat console, conversational assistant, clear chat, and also your prompt and your uh, and the response that Duet AI has given to you. Basically, this is the prompt where you're asking Duet AI how to create a BigQuery table named bookshelf.books from the select query where you actually update the select query. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope it helped. Um, so got score. Amazing, Arjun. Congrats. I'll just stop recording now. So I'll stay uh, around for four or five minutes if you have questions.